Okay, so now we have another short talk on uh, pulp, and this is the last talk before lunch, so um, not to put any pressure on you. <laughs> yes, I'll try to keep this as short as possible. So I already said to yesterday, uh, I'm from ETH Zurich, I want to uh, present to you pulp, our parallel ultra-low power platform. Um, yeah, I'll start with uh, the group who we are. Um, this is a joint project of ETH Zurich and University of Bologna. It's the group of Professor Benini. Um, there are many people involved in this. Um, the total team is about 40, and uh, most of them work on pulp in some way. Um, we do a lot of ICs at ETH Zurich. Uh, we've taped up over 400 ICs, um, not for pul pulp, but uh, in total. Um, our closest collaborations are Polymi. They do a custom compiler for our stuff. I will we'll get back to that soon. Uh, we, we get uh, low power building blocks from CEA Letty, and we also work with EPFL. And I hope we can add low risk to this pretty soon. Uh, to the, yeah. So what are our goals? Uh, this is a comparison of uh, energy efficiency of uh, different uh, computer architectures. And what we try to reach is the the efficiency of a, of a biological brain. And this basically means uh, one giga ops per milliwatt or one picojoule per operation. Um, yeah, so that's our long-term goal. We're not there yet, but we are trying to. Um, the other thing we try to reach is energy proportionality, which means uh, this, is, um, this is not an actual measurement of a CPU, but it's um, if, you, if you look at uh, if you do a regular CPU, you have like uh, one corner where it's heavily optimized, and it works very good in that corner. But the problem is there are some edges, and uh, if you want to go ultra high performance or ultra low, uh, if you have a very small workload, it doesn't scale as good. So uh, we try uh, to, to get this curve as flat as possible. And uh, I have to say, we don't do high ultra high performance computing. We try to stay within milliwatts. But um, yeah, yeah, and move the frontier to one gigaops per milliwatt. So yeah, what is Pulp? It's our open research platform. It's going to be open source. It's not on GitHub yet, but uh, that's a long-term goal. Um, the goals I've already mentioned, and uh, what we do is efficient uh, processor cores. Um, we also do some hardware accelerators, which are, of course, usually more efficient than software. And uh, we also, we're a team of hardware engineers. We, we do technology stuff. And we also have a software team which does stuff like OpenVX and, uh, yeah, OpenMP. Uh, visit our website. It's pulp.eth.ch. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, pulp. What do we do? Uh, we exploit parallelism. The problem with, um, with uh, the, the kind of computing we do is that if you go to a lower voltage, your performance decreases. So you have to go parallel to make up that uh, loss. Um, and you can save energy there by sharing resources and stuff like that, as I'll show you later in the architecture. Um, our processor cores are simple, small, and efficient. Um, currently, we used OpenRISC with our custom extensions. Uh, I'll introduce them later on. And what I did is uh, add RISC-V support to the platform. Yeah. On ter in terms of hardware, we do near threshold uh, operation to get even more efficiency. Um, yeah, I have it on a poster. I won't further mention it here. And uh, yeah. So this is a, a list of chips we've taped out for pulp. Um, they are all with open risk cores, of course. But it's uh, silicon proven in 28 nanometer. Our flagship uh, chips are in 28 nanometer from ST. Uh, but we've also done uh, 180 nanometers, 130 nanometers. Mixed signal stuff, um, where we have an ADC and a pulp cluster on the same chip. And uh, we do also student projects where they implement uh, special features and stuff like that. Yeah. So every triangle is a tape out. And you can see we have quite some planned. Um, yeah. Most importantly, the, the GF28 one, which will be in uh, October if everything works out. Yeah, so what did I do? I replaced, open, I replaced the open risk course with risk five ones. Um, why do we do it? Um, of course, 
the open risk community is a bit phasing down and most of the activity has shifted to risk five and of course that's why we are, why we're all here um yeah another thing is the compressed instructions there's no comparable per comparable thing in the open risk world and we'd like to try this out because we think it could give us some energy gains um What's the current status? Uh, we have a working core. It's basically um, an adapted open risk core because the instruction sets are very similar. Um, we have support for RV32i, which is the base instruction set. The compressed instructions we have support too. And okay, this is, will be one of the, how should I say it? Um, this is usually quite controversial. We only implement the MUL instruction from the M extension uh, because that's what we did in open risk too. And the reason for that is we don't see much usage of the upper 32 bits of the multiplication result if you do, if you do that. So that's, that's why we have it. And the uh, advantage is we can do it in one cycle. So yeah. Uh, some synthesis results. Um, it's, uh, the results are for UMC 68, uh, 60, 65, of course, um, because it's simpler than 28 nanometer for me. Um, it's about 22 kilogate equivalent per core and about 450 megahertz at a quite high voltage for our platform. So usually it will be uh, lower voltage and slower, of course. Um, we also have support for the basic privileged uh, stuff like uh, exceptions. Uh, yeah, if you, if you know the spec, it's M mode and M bare memory addressing, so no protection at all, no virtual memory. But yeah. What I'd like to say is uh, we see quite a big impact on code size from the compressed instructions. And uh, the blue bars is uh, kind of, it's normalized. Blue bars is the compressed instructions. The, the red bars are the regular uh, RV32 instructions. Uh, David Patterson ment mentioned yesterday about 34%, I guess, on, on average. It's kind of what we see. We see a bit more in our standard benchmarks, I can say. And um, the yellow bars are uh, open risk. and uh, you can see that it's uh, quite significant uh, sometimes. So yeah, that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, and ignore the, the green ones. So yeah, yeah. How does our architecture look like? Um, it's a uh, it's a system on chip, and we have one or multiple clusters on it. And in the clusters, the red stuff is uh, is the processing cores. We we have two, four, or eight of them. So yeah, uh, we share each each cluster inside the SOC. Uh, they share uh, a L1 memory. We call it tightly coupled data memory. Um, the, the catch is it's not a real cache. It's explicitly uh, managed. But uh, on the plus side, uh, you don't lose energy uh, through unnecessary transfers and uh, in single cycle access if there isn't contention. So single cycle uh, delay. Yeah. And the same, the same thing with the instruction cache. Uh, it's also shared. So the idea is if all cores run the same program, they can profit a lot from that. Uh, yeah. On the system on chip side, uh, we have some frequency, we have a frequency lo locked loop uh, on our chips. Uh, and of course, the memory and stuff is, uh, we have uh, that. We have SRAM. We don't have uh, DDR2 at the moment, uh, mainly because we don't have access to the technology. Uh, Yes, the frequency locked loop actually is from CIA Leti. Yeah, so what did we do with open risk? Um, we improved the core through some ESA extensions. Um, we have our own, co own core developed at IIS, and um, what it did was add hardware loops, pre post increment memory access. Uh, I hope that's uh, known. Or, and we also do vectorial packed SIMD instructions. So those things give us a, a, a big performance hit. Uh, Plus, and uh, we, we, it's, it's kind of a motivation for what we can also do with RISC-V. It's not planned, but we'll have a look at that. So to use those uh, extensions, we, we have a custom LLVM compiler from Politecnico di Milano. So it's just C code and no changes are required. Yeah. So what's uh, my future work? Uh, RISC-V is still in, in development uh, at ETH. So and if everything goes according to plan, we have a tape out in, in October, which is GF28, which would be quite nice. And uh, yeah, 
uh, we will have to evaluate the, the Ryan extensions for um, for their impact on, on risk five um, the hardware loops we, we probably won't do it because uh, branching is one of the main differences between open risk and risk five and it's also the reason for the for the code size differences I, I was I mean to say that before yeah so branches in open risk are like uh, set flag, branch, depending on flag, and then a delay slot, and uh, on risk 5 it's a single instruction, so that's quite nice. And uh, hardware loops have a smaller impact. Uh, we kind of hoped um, that we'll see, I was looking forward to the vectorial instructions. We do packed simd in uh, open risk, mainly because it's extremely easy to add them uh, in our code. Uh, the overhead, uh, the hardware you, you need additionally is, is very small and it, it fits very well into it. So I was kind of hoping that we could adapt, uh, that, we, that, that we get a packed simd extension too. So, and so we don't have to go all the way with the compiler. And uh, yeah, but we'll see what we do there. And uh, yeah, of course uh, we are always, uh, the, the reason I'm here from, from Switzerland, from Zurich is that to, to get the word out and uh, we are hoping for uh, collaborations, interactions with the RISC-V community. Yeah, and that's already it. Uh, I think I was pretty fast. Um, good. So visit us at pulp.eth.ch, which is our website. Um, and if you want to have a look at, our, um, at those 400 chips we taped out, we also have a website for that. It's asic.ethz.ch. Uh, it's a little bit antique, but you, you get a small description and technology and uh, size and all that stuff. Uh, you can find it there, and it's, it's quite nice if you want to have a look. Yeah. So, yeah. So I guess I had a comment on the branching. I think that's the, we've heard this multiple times with different ISAs that compare and branch is kind of the right way to do it. <laughs> so. Um, and it shows up in performance and in code size. So that was, I was going to ask exactly what was the big difference, and I guess you explained it. So, Okay, great. Uh, thanks. <laughs>